Hey everyone, welcome to Wednesday Night Live. So excited for you to join us here on our YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, uh, the reason for the name is Wednesday Night Live is a uh, ministry that we have on Instagram and Facebook where we go live every week at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays with a uh, worship segment. Uh, me and three other ladies uh, just usher in the presence of God um, and we sing some worship songs and then I'll give a brief devotion and the devotion that I give is the devotion that I pre-record here on YouTube as well. So if you want to get the full Wednesday Night Live experience, please, please, please add me on Instagram or Facebook and um, so that we can stay connected and that you can join us for the live segment so you can get the full experience. But I am so excited that you would choose to join us here on YouTube. Maybe you're listening um, in the morning getting ready for work or you're driving to work in your car or you're just hanging out at home and you needed a quick pick me up. Whatever brought you here, I am so happy that you're here because tonight we're starting a new series called Parallels and we're going to be talking about how the parables of Jesus relate to our everyday life now. Parables, for those of you who may not know, this is a new word for you. Maybe you didn't grow up in church like myself or uh, you're just not familiar with this term. But basically, parables were stories told by Jesus to basically make a point. Um, they're kind of like analogies, if you will. So these uh, stories are made up stories. Um, the, the, what happens in the stories um, is made up by Jesus, but the whole the message of the parables is true. It's, it's meant to help us give us a better understanding of, of God and, and Jesus and the love that God has for us. So tonight I'm going to be sharing on two different parables and both are going to talk about um, the different topics of hearing, seeking, and growing. The first parable I'm going to share is the parable of the sower and it's found in Matthew chapter 13 and I'm just going to like set the scene for us really quick. Basically Jesus was surrounded by a huge crowd of people. There were so many people that he couldn't eat. He was basically like on a beach and so he couldn't even like fit himself to be able to speak to these people because he was so surrounded. So what he did was he actually got into the boat that was docked and then preached this or shared this parable from the boat and the people that were out on the beach who were kind of at the edge of the water listening to him. So I'm going to read this parable with us together, the first part of it, and he basically starts off by saying, a farmer went to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, 60 or 30 times what was sown. Then he says, whoever has ears, let them hear. So in this parable, um, Jesus is talking about one type of seed. A farmer scatters the same seed and it lands on different um, situations, we're gonna call them. So basically, just keep in mind, we're talking about the same seed, but he's sharing about four different seed situations. The first seed was scattered along the path. The second seed was scattered among rocky places. The third seed was scattered among thorns. And the fourth seed was scattered on good soil. So we're gonna scroll down to verse 19 because Jesus is now gonna tell us what exactly this parable means. Verse 19 says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom or heaven and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown among the path. This is for the people who maybe went to church or grew up in church, but um, they never really got it. Like they never really understood the message. And so um, it never really like sunk in for them. That seed was never fully planted. It just fell along the path. And so, um, you know, when doubt or the enemy came in with different thoughts or different theologies or different religious systems, it was very easy for them to be persuaded otherwise because they didn't have a root in anything. That seed that was, wasn't really planted because it fell along a path and there was nothing to nourish it. There was no substance to keep it growing. Because a seed that's planted on a sidewalk, like I said, there's nowhere for it to plant root. There's nowhere for it to grow. It's not in a position to get the right nourishment or the right exposure to the proper elements that are gonna help it to grow. So if a bird flies along the sidewalk and sees the seed just sitting on the sidewalk, 
it can easily come and snatch it up because there's nothing protecting it. There's nothing hiding it from the elements from this bird that's going to come in and just swoop it up and eat it. This is just like the enemy. Jesus is basically using this analogy as an example to show what the enemy does for those of us who we never had these firm roots in church and so the enemy will come up and swoop us up and easily, he can easily convince us that, you know, because we never really understood God or the Bible or anything, it just must not be real. And some of you, if you're listening and you feel like this is you, some of you, maybe you just never had that chance. Your family, like you never, you guys never grew up in church. You never had that influence. And that is why relationships with people are so important. And now I'm talking to the Christians because it's not that person's fault that their seeds were scattered. It's not that person's fault that they never actually had a chance to be exposed to God, to be exposed to the love of the Lord. That's why it's our job to reach those people. And here's the great thing about God. Like God does not force people into a relationship with him. He gives us free will. But it is our job as Christians to make sure those seeds have the nutrition that they need in order to grow. And and if we're using this analogy, you know, it's still up to that person if they want if they want to give that seed the proper nourishment and take their relationship with God in their own hands. But we have a responsibility to at least put that seed in the right place. If it's on the if it's on the path and it's easily exposed to the elements, and we know this person and we have a relationship with this person. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's even a parent. It's our responsibility to pick that seed up and maybe invite it to church, put it somewhere where it isn't out into the elements of the world and can be easily influenced. And maybe just say, say to that person, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you today. And maybe that person doesn't necessarily know what praying means and they're like, what in the world? But it's our job just to kind of plant that seed and let God nourish it. So if you know somebody um, that sounds like who I'm talking about right now, just maybe, just maybe take one more step further and just pick up that seed, pick up that person and put them in a place, put them in a position where that seed can be nourished. So that is the first type of seed situation. The second is the seed scattered on rocky places. Starts in verse 22, it says, the seed falling on rocky places refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. These are those of us who maybe like we started going to church and we got super excited about our relationship with God. Maybe we even got baptized and we had all these, you know, big moments. But then outside of those big moments, maybe we didn't water those seeds. Maybe we didn't, um, you know, read our word outside of church. We didn't open up our Bibles. Maybe we didn't listen to worship music in our car. And basically, you know, the outside of those big life-changing moments, we really didn't, you know, sustain a personal relationship with God. And so when life got rocky, you know, maybe they lost their job. Maybe that relationship ended. Maybe that loved one died. When those rocky things happen, just that pure emotion that they had in the beginning of their walk with God, just that pure emotion was not able to sustain their joy. And so then they quickly fall away. Then we have our third seed situation, and this is the seed scattered among thorns. We pick up in verse 22 and it says, the seed falling among thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. These are those of us who we believe in God, we go to church, but the worries of this life choke and suffocate our relationship and our belief in God out of us. The worries of, is God going to provide? Is God enough? Because if you think about it, you know, a seed could grow under thorns, but as soon as the stem gets tall, the thorns are going to pierce the plant and then the plant is not going to be able to grow beyond the point at which their worries and their doubts take them. The level to which you allow your worries to overrule you is the ceiling cap of your growth. If you allow the thorns of your worries and your doubts to come above you and to rule over you, that is the level to which you are going to be able to grow yourself. You cannot grow beyond the point of which you are worrying and doubting. You cannot grow beyond that point. I'm not saying you shouldn't have any worries. We all have worries. I'm just saying don't give your worries thorns. 
Don't give your worries the ability to pierce your purpose. And then we have the final seed situation, the seed that fell on good soil. We pick up in verse 23 where it says, the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what is sown. Because it's not just enough to hear the word. It's not just enough to listen to these videos or go to church. In order to really produce a harvest, you have to invest in your seed. Even a seed on good soil still needs nourishment. But even the same nourishment has a different impact on different soils. Bear with me for a second. What does a seed need to grow? Water and sunlight, right? Where does water come from? Rain. Okay, obviously these are the basics. Where are you going with this? See, a seed that is thrown or planted on a sidewalk or in a rocky place or in thorns, a seed in those situations, rain coming down is just an inconvenience. But for a seed grown or planted on good soil, rain is a requirement for growth. And some of us, we need to move our seeds to good soil because the same rain, the same situation can fall upon us, but depending on where our seed is planted, a different product will produce. And instead of rain producing worry and negativity and struggle, the right environment rain can produce fruit, a harvest, and the story says this is the one who produces crop yielding 160 and 30 times what was sown. Because I, I wanna read for you another parable really quickly as I close. It's the parable of the growing seed and it's found in Mark 4 verses 26 through 29. And it says, he also said that he is in Jesus. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground day and night, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle in it because a harvest has come. You don't have to know why you're in the situation that you're in to know that you are growing from it and you are getting better uh, uh, because of it and that there is a harvest coming. You don't have to know why to know that you are better because of it. And growth, growth does not happen all at once. You see a watermelon seed, it, most of us know what a watermelon seed looks like. It's, it's small and it's all one color. It's all black. And so uh, the, when you put the watermelon seed in the ground, but something starts to happen to it, it starts to transform. Something is happening and it starts to break open and it starts to transform and it starts growing roots into the ground. And then, and then, and then that seed, it, the sprouts that come out of the ground and nobody knows all the hard work to get there. And there's, and there's still not much left to show for it because nobody knows all the hard work that it did underground. Nobody knows all all the things that you've had to battle in your room all by yourself where only you and God and those four walls know but those situations are what give you roots so that when you sprout out of the ground you can withstand because there's levels to this verse 28 says all by itself the soil produces grain first the stalk then the head then the full kernel in the head First the stalk, then the head, then, then the full kernel in the head. If the grain stopped growing at its stalk, it would live the rest of its life not knowing its full potential and its full purpose. If the grain stopped growing at the head, then it would never live up to its full potential, which was to hold the kernel inside the head. And then once the grain is ripe, the farmer can reap it because the harvest is here. Your harvest is coming. Don't give up at step one of your growth. Don't give up at step two of your growth. Don't give up at all because you may not even know what level you on. You could be closer than you even think you are. You could be at the very end of this thing and you just need to hold on to a little bit longer. Listen, whatever God has promised you, it will come to pass, but don't give up. Don't stop growing. Pray for God to increase your faith today because your harvest is coming and you are closer than you think. You are closer 
than you think. One of my favorite verses is Galatians 6, 9 that says, do not grow weary in doing a good thing for at the right time you will reap a harvest. And let me just tell you friends, your harvest is coming. So see your transformation all the way through to the finish. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Wednesday Night Live, first week of our parallel series. If you've enjoyed this message, I guarantee that you will enjoy the full Wednesday Night Live experience where we have our worship segment. And so please, please, please feel free to join us. Instagram and Facebook, both of those profiles are public and uh, you can join us live on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And like we always say, if you have need or you're believing God for something and you need prayer, please, please, please feel free to reach out to us. We are constantly praying for you all. Uh, whether you tell us your need or not, we are constantly praying for every person who watches uh, these clips. And we just pray that you are encouraged by it. We pray that God was able to speak to you today. And that's a wrap and we will see you next week, y'all.